This is our very immediate talk on GPS jamming. Uh, your original plan to submit a full talk uh, didn't have uh, time to finish and uh, kind of dropped the ball. Uh, this is a talk about GPS uh, jamming as well as GPS moving. Uh, we're going to show you a short video. This actually happened two weeks ago where a luxury yacht. Talking was, to Mike. Uh, sorry? Mike. because the GPS signal was hacked and the yacht went off course and ended up in uh, the wrong country's territorial waters. Uh, So essentially the goal going into this project uh, was to be able to build our own GPS jammer, uh, much like the University of Texas did, uh, to be able to hijack small drones, uh, other autonomous vehicles. Uh, it took a little bit of research. We were actually able to put together a small uh, uh, L1 uh, broadcast tower, uh, large enough to essentially cover something like this room. Uh, the range we were getting is about 50 feet. Uh, the intended demo we had was to actually have three of these towers so we could uh, perform a full hijack. Uh, only had a chance to complete one of them. Uh, the material cost was under $80 to be actually the, to have our own GPS simulator. Uh, it runs uh, off a fairly simple Linux script. Uh, I have not yet been able to actually produce a moving object. Uh, I am able to pro provide a GPS locations for a stationary target. Uh, after the conference, I will be releasing the full uh, hardware spec uh, and the scripts to be able to do this at home. Uh, which means if you build up three to five of these and place them somewhere in the building, uh, so for example, somebody fires up their phone, uh, typically you should not have GPS reception uh, indoors, uh, obviously depending on the building materials. Uh, with these uh, towers, you can either A, help somebody actually navigate within your own building and give them accurate GPS coordinates, or uh, you could, uh, misguided and causing somebody to uh, drive to the wrong neighborhood with their car GPS, uh, depending where it's planted, or to uh, misguide somebody inside the building, uh, routing to the wrong locations. Uh, obviously, there's the L2 GPS signal, which is reserved for the military and is encrypted. But since it's not available to the civilians, uh, there's not a lot of reason to actually uh, try and uh, broadcast or try to spoof it. Uh, SFA opens up uh, drone use for the public. Uh, I do foresee more attacks against individually owned drones, uh, especially agriculture drones, uh, just due to the fact that they're going to be flying over large open areas, uh, fairly low, just so that they can actually uh, interact with the crops. Yeah. Hi, I'm Alan Kirk, okay. Um, actually, um, yeah, to be honest, like, um, I wasn't prepared for this talk, but we have all the references. Um, yeah, we're supposed to do a talk for DEF CON, but it was canceled. However, like, I was planning to uh, do a talk, like, regarding the GPS jamming to, like, what um, I used to do with a CDMA, like, CDMA before, you know, because, you know, for the, uh, with the Kia phones before, before smartphones and everything. Um, I'll be planning to, uh, you know, give a talk about that, about CDMA uh, synchronization and, like, you know, how to track someone um, for example, um, yeah, using cell phone towers. So yeah, probably um, in the future I'll be um, talking about that. So. Uh, 
if you follow the Twitter feed uh, for B-Sides, uh, we're going to release the full hardware spec. Uh, so uh, with under $80 for the parts, you're going to be able to build up your GPS jammer. So just multiply it by three, and you can start playing with it yourself. Uh, any questions I can answer? Magellan, does it have if any kind of similar uh, attacks against it? Uh, so the Magellan units come in a few varieties. Uh, the ones that have uh, differential GPS, uh, those are actually a lot harder to attack because you do have two different diversity antennas. Uh, but the units that have one active antenna are susceptible to this attack. Uh, unless you're talking about something that supplements it with a lower end signal. Yes, if you have diversity antennas, which is what most ships have, and you have uh, DGPS, uh, what's used as a construction site <coughs> to get resolution down to a few meters, those are a lot different, more difficult to attack. It's still doable, but then you're going to need to actually synchronize the timing signal on your own attacking nodes so that both antennas believe what you're broadcasting. So you have to find a chip that's going to move those, but add your own clock and maintain the timing. Exactly. I believe having your own GPS with an active antenna that's far enough away that you're not jamming your own GPS signal could work, or you could actually have your own hardwired uh, network to do backhaul so that the chips could communicate with themselves. You synchronize all the cell network. That be good. You could, but then you lose a lot of stealth. And the cell phone network itself gets a timing signal off the GPS signal. And if you're jamming the GPS signal, you're starting with your time signal. How much is the CG plot these days? Under 80K. If you get one from the Navy. You wouldn't talk a cloud for folks who might be over France. <laughs> no, they make them smaller. You could actually use them as soon as they fall uh, fine. They do. I'd love to see it, but everything I've seen, uh, I've seen the Navy sell stuff surplus that was almost vaguely affordable. Uh, uh, space work. Uh, any other questions you can answer? Is it doing this super legal? Uh, so, <laughs> do, yes. doing this for malice, yes, there's numerous FCC and other other regulations that prohibit you from screwing up the GPS signal. Uh, however, if you're doing this in a closed environment for research purposes, you can do this. Uh, you, you need to be in a shielded, build, a shielded building, shielded environment. Uh, one solution we've actually found that works really well is uh, Harbor Freight sells a sandblasting cabinet. Uh, it doesn't take too much more insulation to actually make it a nice Faraday cage. It gives you about two square feet to work with. Use directional antennas to mitigate leakage into the outside environment. I wouldn't do it. If it comes down to you're actually publishing research and somebody knocks on your door and asks to see your secure environment, you're probably much better off showing a secure and sealed metal cabinet than saying, oh yeah, just doing the field over there with directional antennas. Given yes. the close, pl uh, close proximity you need in order to do these proof of concepts, what is like, the practical application of this research? Like, what, what can you use this for in, in reality? So there's no reason why this can't be scaled up. Uh, since I'm not actually doing this for mouse, there's no reason to. But you can easily build or connect a larger hand. Uh, there's a reason you were using less than one watt, specifically as a proof of concept. Since I'm releasing it, I'm not trying to actually hijack somebody's yacht. Uh, I can, if you have a, a little spark fun GPS or a, a, a small argument aboard, I could show you that I can geolocate you in Australia, and that's good enough for these purposes. And it's easy to take it from there. I think I had seen something that was from the privacy aspect too. If you're worried that somebody is trying to GPS track you with something on your car, you could, if you jam it, they know you're jamming it, but if you fake it and you make it seem like you're somewhere else or going somewhere else or not leaving, then better from a safety purpose. Yeah, there's a lot of systems <laughs> that are actually connected to this. A certain device that will lock or unlock or change the privacy settings and encryption settings based on this. Uh, there was actually a funny incident related to uh, car jamming you were talking about. Uh, so New Jersey Turnpike has this really nifty option for truckers is you don't actually have to have a GPS, uh, easy pass charging based on the GPS. So this one trucker figured out a way to save over $17,000 a month uh, on his easy pass bills. The problem is it was interfering with the New York Airport approach system. <laughs> After the, the system kept rebooting for over the course of three months, they realized that something must be going on related to the injury turnpike. They started reviewing the tapes. 
and eventually they narrowed it down to two trucks and after searching them, they found the GPS uh, tracking system that was being sold by DL Extreme. And that was a week before DL Extreme got the really massive letter from the feds. You might have heard about. That was because of the New York uh, airport incident. So wait, some of the GPS scooper was rebooting in the New York airport like control systems? The system that uh, allowed the aircraft to do the final approach uh, uh, autonomously as opposed to manually, yes. That's a whole other scary discussion. Well, what uh, was happening was the trucks, uh, if I remember correctly, were parking right like under the approach. So as the planes were coming in, it distorted the signal, and they're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, and when they reviewed the camera, they always saw, like, what the hell? Every time it happened, there's this truck that's parked right there. And then as soon as it leaves, hey, look, no problem. If I remember correctly, this truck wasn't actually parking. This truck was actually going down the highway, and there was an easy pass uh, about a mile and a half from the New York airport. It must have been a different incident, though, because I do remember there was a story where the, the truck was parked right at the end of the runway to eat his lunch every day, and, and then they figured that out. I think that was the Chicago airport incident two years ago. Oh, okay. This is a newer incident, the other airport jam. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to hear that. So, what about altitude? calculations are able to be delayed as well. Uh, it, it's harder, but yes, we have the code uh, in, uh, to broadcast that. A lot of uh, units, uh, such as the one your car GPS, actually don't care about the altitude. If you're doing something like hijacking per uh, drone, then yes, altitude calculations come into play. Just say it's in the middle of the center of the earth or something of that nature. It's actually really funny because you can fuzz the GPS, and I found that a lot of the cheaper GPSs and, uh, do break when you send them good signals. So, for some reason, sending negative altitude is bad. <laughs> yeah, Dolly. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, any other questions we can answer? How big is the unit? Uh, the unit is actually about the size of a deck of cards. Again, we're broadcasting at only about one watt, so I didn't have to do a lot of isolation with uh, our rep or Ambridge. So if you're scaling it up, uh, you are going to go up in size pretty much exponentially because you you would to do a lot more shielding. So it's basically like you're saying, like if I did 100 uh, feet, you would be like the, the 50 feet is the up. most that you can really do with something that small. Oh, okay. But like uh, scaling up is fairly easy with even commercial grade amps. If you have a camera you license and you've worked with uh, build your own little radios, then you should be able to scale up easily. Gotcha. Is GPS in the range of most software defined radio, like USRP? Uh, yes, it's definitely within the range of USRP because it has dropping boards. But uh, it's I don't have the slide with the frequencies. But uh, if you buy the little TV uh, dongle, you can receive the GPS signal. But keep in mind it's receive only. If you're actually uh, doing more than just receiving, you're going to need a dedicated software defined radio. Uh, ideally, I'd recommend actually getting something that's specific to that center frequency, not something that happens to be able to tune it. Uh, because once you uh, drift off signal, uh, didn't, did you, did even consumer grade GPSs uh, are fairly well centered. So uh, you could start by testing with a uh, time clock source, get like a 10 kilohertz uh, time source. Yes? So have you been able to skew time with it? To what level? I haven't played with skewing time. I've played with sending the wrong GPS location. But if you have, if you're getting time signal off the GPS, there's no reason why you can't broadcast 1776 all the time. So you would need an accurate time source. You just need a slightly variable difference. Well, if you are the accurate time source, then you could be as accurate or inaccurate as you want. You just need a timing source. So something like a 10 kilohertz uh, reference point that's used in any kind of uh, uh, radio communications would work. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by. We apologize for not coming out. I feel like we need the hardware and the software on the short feed. Sure. 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 Sure.